Hi there, I'm Rebecca and a really warm welcome back to my channel, Created by Rebecca. In this week's video we're going to be making a watercolour sea glass heart, much like the one you see here in my sketchbook. Let's get started. Here's my background that I've pre-done so that it's nice and dry. It's a very washy, wet on wet mixture. And I used from my Cotman palette raw sienna, raw umber, a little bit of burnt umber, and then I made a very runny mixture of indigo and sepia, and I had that on the end of a paintbrush, and I flicked the paintbrush against my finger so that it made this lovely speckled pattern. And because some of it was wet and some of it was dry, I got some sort of blurred out marks and I also got some really sharp, crisp spots. And that's going to be our sand texture. So here are the colours we'll be using to get the sea glass. We have Windsor & Newton Cotman Turquoise, Windsor & Newton Cotman Viridian, we have a tiny bit of Windsor & Newton Professional Neutral Tint, Windsor & Newton Cotman Thalo Green, Quartz Creations Cobalt Turquoise Light, and Windsor & Newton Cotman Indigo. There's two other colours that I will probably throw in. Quartz Creations Peachy and Quartz Creations Potter's Pink. And here's where I'll use those two colours, a little tiny starfish. So this is me sketching out my idea, looking at the shape I want to use, working out what colours I want to mix, and how to achieve that sea glass look. I was originally going to do the whole piece just as the sea glass colours on white paper, but I decided that it would look more convincing on a sandy background. With this sample, I did the colour straight onto the white paper, just like the heart above. And then I washed in the sand colour around the sea glass pebbles. And then on this one, which is how we're actually going to work, I used the sandy colour right over the paper and then laid the sea glass colours on over the top and I've also added a bit of a shadow. I'm not aiming for realism here, but it makes it a little bit more believable. The first job is to draw out outline, and this is just literally going to be a simple outline of the heart. I'm going to keep it very light because I don't want to keep any of it once the piece is finished. You should just be able to see the outline of the heart. The little puddles of paint that I have made here are taken straight from the main palette and they're pretty much mass tone. So I'm now just going to start watering the colours down with some clean water so that I get a really pale version. And then I'm going to use my brush to make some smooth, irregular shapes. But I'm also going to lift some of the colour away from the very edge of the shape. And if I can't quite soften it enough, I can come in with a clean piece of paper towel and dab it away. I want to really soften this edge. Sea glass has a kind of glow to it that's actually very tricky to capture. And 
and I want to keep the stronger colour towards the centre. I'm not going to worry too much that I have a hard line happening here. As you can see, once we've sort of layered some other tones and put the shadow layer on, any hard edges that happen because of the amount of water that you've added to lift the colour makes it pretty much disappear. And once you have the whole piece completed, you really won't notice that harder edge. Now I'm coming in with some turquoise light and I'm going to make a kind of triangular shape piece here. Remember that where sea glass has been tumbled, it has lost all its hard edges. So there won't be any real jaggedy points. Everything will be softened. And now we're coming in with the Windsor & Newton turquoise. You also get a lot of white sea glass, but rather than introduce maybe white watercolour or gouache, I'm actually going to use a very soft grey. I'm keeping the nuggets of sea glass different, as different as I can, different shapes, different sizes. Now I've got a few colours down, I can start to mix some together. So we'll go here with the phthalo green and I'm going to mix it with the turquoise light, cobalt turquoise light. I got a bit close to the other shape there, so I'm just going to try and lift out some of that grey. Because this is a watercolour paper, it can withstand a little bit of what they call scrubbing, where you just use the bristles of the brush to work the colour back out of the fibres. but you don't want to overdo it because you will start to bead up the surface of the paper.
Some colours will be easier to lift out than others and that's all to do with their staining properties. So just be aware of that. The reason we're lifting this colour at the edge is to try and create that glow that sea glass has. Sea glass comes in a multitude of colours. Real sea glass, i.e. sea glass that has been made naturally, is basically broken bottles and other glass waste that has found its way down to the sea. And the shards have been smoothed and softened by years of abrasion by rocks, sand, the action of the waves. Some collectors search for really specific colours and they even know where they've come from in terms of what factory has manufactured that glass. There are ways of manufacturing your own sea glass and they usually involve a gemstone tumbler and a lot of time. <laughs> But if you want really big bits that's probably the best way to do it. Some beaches won't even let you take sea glass even though it is basically junk and, um, and is polluting the beach. The beach has become so well known for the sea glass that they don't want people taking it away because it stops people coming to visit the beach to look at the sea glass. So it's well worth doing your research before you go and start picking up sea glass from a beach. Before I get too carried away, I've just brought in my little palette of handmade colours from Quartz Creations and I'm just going to put in my little starfish and then while it's still wet I will just drop in a tiny bit of the potter's pink Just give him a little bit of dimension.
Now the first shapes will be dry enough to pop another layer onto. And we're going to focus it in the center area. Try and keep these outer areas quite light and build a little bit of focus here in the centers. And it's as soft as that. And this combined with the glow on the edge will give it a sort of three dimensional shape. Coming in with an indigo on top of these turquoise ones. Just to try and take the blue down a little bit. And I'm just using a finer brush to pick up some of the neutral tint. And I'm just grounding the shapes onto the surface with a shadow line. And before I go too far, I can just blend that out. In this instance, I have the sun coming from this sort of direction, so it's just creating a really sharp little shadow here. This shadow might look a little bit odd at first, but keep going. And once they're all on, it will suddenly work. The lovely thing about neutral tint is that it has so many colours in it. It doesn't make a hard black shadow, it's soft, it has nuance.
there we go all finished I'm usually a brush stroke or two away from overworking watercolour so I have to be really careful and know when to stop <laughs> right that's it for this week's video thank you so much for watching please remember to like share and subscribe to me here on YouTube and until next time bye